Well, welcome to yet another edition of Inside the Zone. Of course, we've got New Sentinel Comets beat writer Blake Sebring, and we've definitely got a lot to talk about this week. It was a tumultuous week, we'll say, for the Comets. I guess let's just recap real quick what happened. <laughs> so last Sunday, the Comets are at Bloomington, and Ryan Palmer goes after Brett Smith. And then no, that was, no, that was Tuesday. That was in January. In, in, uh, in January that that happened. Well, and then uh, on uh, Sunday, they lose at Bloomington. Right. Then and then Tuesday they come back, and that's when Chalk goes after Palmer. Right. Palmer knocks out, knocks Chalk to the ice. He hits his head on the ice, gets a concussion. Then they come back Friday. And actually, they come back to win the game Tuesday. Yeah, they come First back to win. First win in Bloomington this year, so that was significant. Against the last place After team After they were the down league. two to nothing. So yeah. then they come back Friday, and less than two minutes in, uh, Bryant Molly goes after Palmer. Um, Boucher comes down from his end, uh, goes after uh, the Bloomington goalie. Uh, it was just pretty much chaos on Friday. Yeah, and then um, and the weird thing is, is how the Bloomington players just didn't respond to it. And which I think the Comets were thinking they would. And, you know, if you're Palmer, why would I fight Molly? He's like 50 pounds heavier and six inches bigger, you know. Uh, so why would I do that? I mean, what purpose does that serve? Um, you, know, uh, you know, he might have gone with somebody smaller, um, but you don't know. I mean, he doesn't have the reputation for being a fighter. He's, he's kind of like, you know, some of those Muskegon guys they used to have. You know, you just kind of, that's the way it goes. <clears throat> and then Nick comes down, and I can't believe nobody from the bench yelled at him as on the way past. You know, <laughs> hey, he was think, on, you know he was on mean? a mission. He was, yeah, he was. <laughs> he knew what he was going to do. <laughs> yeah, he he lost his mind. I mean, yeah, and uh, and he got every bit of it too. I mean, he really, really hit Mahoney Wilson, broke his nose, and and uh, just you know, just the whole thing was everybody was in shock. You know, I mean, I, I talk all the time with the bloggers about how. None of these guys know what to do in a line brawl. They've never seen one. And I would bet that's the first one that a lot of the guys on the ice had ever seen, let alone been part of, you know. So they just grabbed on. They didn't know what to do, you know. And, uh, and luckily, that's all they did because then who knows how it would have gone. I mean, Henley could have very easily gotten a, a five-minute fighting penalty. He was throwing punches in there without a doubt, and the other guy wasn't. So, I mean, it could have been two five-on-threes for ten minutes. I mean, it could have been ridiculous. Yeah, it's surprisingly, you know, the Comets almost come back to win that game. Yeah, they did. They came, they they uh, they fought hard, and they, I think they just ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. So they end up losing five four. Then on Saturday night, they play in Allen. First time ever the Americans have come to Fort Wayne. That great, goes to a game. shootout. Great game. They almost I mean, win that. It goes to shootout, and they lose. And they're down two nothing again. Without Molly, they, without Boucher. Yeah, you're you're out without your MVP essentially. You're without your captain. You're without your rookie of the year. That's, you know, three key guys, and you come back against them. Very, very good team. Very, very good game. Uh, very technical game. A lot of turnovers, but both teams were covering up so well defensively that it didn't hurt them that much. Um, just a very well-played, executed game. And so while the Comets were playing Allen, and then last night when they played uh, at Bloomington again, which amazingly there was no fighting going on in that game. I think everybody's pretty much sick of it at that point. Actually, but, I don't think Bloomington has anybody to fight. Right. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they don't have anybody. I mean, I think they just don't. And so the Comets, they, they win 5-3 last night in Bloomington. And again, Boucher and Molly sit out. Today, the CHL comes down with the penalties. Boucher gets four games. Molly gets three. And so luckily, you know, they've already played two games. So Molly only has to set out one more game, which is tomorrow at uh, Tulsa. Well, and think about this, too. You're going with Jerry Festa in Tulsa, where he's comfortable playing because he was in Missouri and played over there a lot, of, you know, a lot. So he would be more comfortable playing there probably than Nick, you know, so that's not a bad thing either. And, uh, and I looked up uh, the last three times that Nick's had significant time off because of injuries or whatever. Uh, he's come back really, really strong each time. I mean, like, 19 2 and 2 one year, 9 2 and 3 in another year, and I think it was uh, 14 1 and 2 in another year. I mean, so I think this rest is going to do him some good, too. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, I mean, how, how does the team come back from this? this? This can either do one thing or another for your season. It can also it can take you down the left path where right. you just kind of spiral out of control, or maybe it can bring them all together and make a great you know, run toward the end of the year. You don't know. I mean, you really don't know. Um, I think right now, you know, I think it's great for Bryant, too, because, for one, he earned a lot of respect from his teammates. 
for two, let's face it, this is more games than he played last year. I mean, almost double probably. I mean, he needs, he could use a couple days, you know. And I'm sure he didn't think that going in or anything like that, but it's a benefit. Take advantage of it, you know, type of thing. And, uh, you know, it's just, and he's been, he's been amazing this year. I mean, that kid has really been good. Um, I, I don't have any doubt he's the rookie of the year. Uh, he's just been very, very solid, most consistent player, you know, maybe on the defense. Him and Henley both have just been really rock solid. Do you agree with the CHL's decisions? I, in a way, I think those are legitimate. I don't think Palmer's one game was legitimate. And if those two are legitimate, how does uh, Brad McMillan get 25 games? I mean, that's a joke. It's a, and he broke the guy's nose. And he hit him in front when the guy knew he was coming and had agreed to fight. So how is that legit? That's where there's so much inconsistency. And it's that way in every league. I'm not just barking on the CHL because it's, it's that way in every league. I mean, it's, I've been doing this for 20-some years, and it's the same thing every time. You know, I wish, that, I wish leagues could do a better job of coming up with criteria that they could publish beforehand so players know and, and media knows and fans know and, and they know essentially too and i realize that each situation is is different but you know just a guideline something so that there's a little bit of uniformity there because it's been this way forever and it doesn't make any sense yeah everybody obviously I mean, you, you just wonder you know, it, it, it you know three and four games is okay that's probably legit but then you look at it and you compare it to other penalties they've given out and you're like no wait a minute how does that work you know and you know you don't see everything on the other but it's just like you know just some consistency would be good yeah everybody knew there was going to be some sort <laughs> sure. of suspension and they knew it when it. those guys didn't go on the trip too right you know and so thankfully you know it's not too long so it's not going to throw the comments off too much uh, the other big question, obviously, is about Colin Chalk. Now, it looked like, you know, he could have possibly played last week, but then on, fr on Thursday he got the headaches, yeah. he, he felt nauseous, clearly concussion well, and symptoms. Clearly, with the Comets' experience with concussions, you're better safe than sorry. I mean, there are guys who were forced into retirement because of concussions and were on workers' compensation claims for years from the Comets. Um, and, you know, this is a serious life-threatening, life-altering condition if, it's not, if you're not careful with it. And they are, they are more than careful, which oh, is Nate, great. Oh. I mean, first off, Colin's got a family that's got to be the first priority. You know, I mean, you know you have kids, and it, it just changes everything. And it, hockey is not that important when you compare it to that. Right. And he's got to be careful, and he's got to be solid, and he's got to be sure that... He's back 100% when he comes back. Because, oh. you know, some guy out there, he just had a concussion. Oh, he's going in the corner. He's going to take a shot. You know, I mean, it's just part of the game. And Colin would be the guy to take the shot for the Comets, too. I mean, he understands that. He, he uh, knows every chick in the game, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think there's 16 games left in the regular season. Comets are right now sitting in second place. They're three, uh, three points behind Evansville. So it's kind of like, you know, do you need to push the envelope at this point? Not really. No, but I think Saturday night's game is a big game. You know, it'll be Nick's first game back down there, um, and it's a big game. You, the Comets, I think, are a little bit in Evansville's head. They've had every time that they've made the Evansville game a priority and talked about it, as in we're shooting for that game or it's not just the middle game of three games, they've won down there. And they've beaten the Icemen because they, they just seem to focus in on them. Um, part of it's the rivalry. Part of it's just they know how to play them. They know how to play Todd Robinson. But when it's just in the middle game and they can look past it or overlook a little bit, that's when they get in trouble. I don't think that'll be the case Saturday night. I think they'll be pretty fired up for that game. I, I can't even imagine how tired these guys have to be because they've played, uh, what's it going to be, eight, six? Eight, 18 games in 32 days. Yeah, and here in this last week, it, it's uh, six games in 10 days or something crazy like that when they yeah. play tomorrow at Tulsa. And they're mostly on the road, too. Yeah, I mean. so, I mean, these guys, the, the, the tiredness is going to catch up. Well, and this is where all the preparation you did beforehand really pays off. You remember when the Comets had two games a week there for three weeks in a row, and Thomas Coach Al Sims said, we're going to work on our conditioning. That's going to be our priority. This is where that pays off. I mean, I couldn't believe how well they played last night. I thought they would be just dead tired after the intensity 
of those two games at home Friday and Saturday. I just didn't think they'd have anything left. And then J.M. Risk comes out 19 seconds in, gets the goal, everybody gets a, their second win right away, and they just never really let Bloomington catch up. I mean, it was 1-1, to -one, then it was 3-1, to -one, and then, you know, they kept every time Bloomington scored, they responded. And, uh, you know, people had a lot of questions about Jerry Festa because they hadn't seen him. Well, I think those questions are answered. I mean, he looks very, very good. Yeah, he does look very, very solid in a backup role. And uh, the thing is, the guy's played 30 games already this sure. year. And he played most of them with Missouri, but he's played a lot. I mean, he's not your typical backup. And so Chalk, he's not going to play tomorrow no. at Tulsa. No. You think he comes back Friday then? I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't either. If there's anything there that doesn't sound just right, sit him. You know, because you know you're going to need him later. And you know this is an injury he can come back from later as long as you don't screw it up now. Yes, and obviously we want Colin to be healthy because we, uh, we know his career's not going to end when he's done playing here in Fort Wayne. Hopefully he'll move on to bigger and better things here with the organization. So another busy week coming up, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday games. You can read about them in the News Central, and, of course, we'll have them covered right here on Wayne TV.